Hi everyone, it's Tips, Tricks, and How-To by Gone Researching. You're watching Steps to Start Your Family Tree, Part 1, Gather, Plan, Record, and Interview. This is the first of two videos that will cover essential basics and highlight some resources to make use of for your genealogical research. No matter your reason for starting genealogy, this video should give you enough information to get yourself started. The reality is it isn't hard to do genealogy right if you educate and organize yourself. But genealogy is not as easy or as quick as it seems to be as on TV. There are lots and lots of unseen hours by many people behind what is presented to viewers of genealogy or history television shows like Who Do You Think You Are, Finding Your Roots, Genealogy Roadshow, and A New Leaf. Genealogy is the study of family history. It's a record or account of the ancestry, meaning going back in time, or descent, coming forward in time, of a person, family, or group. So you are a genealogist, family historian, kind of an investigator or detective, or in the eyes of some family members, nuts, when they don't understand why you're so interested in the past. The first step we're going to cover is gather, record, plan. Now genealogists usually tell beginners that the best practice is to start with yourself and work backwards in time, generation to generation. If you start with the family lore, you're related to a famous person and research that famous person and their descendants, you might discover that your family doesn't fit into this famous person's tree because it's the wrong tree. So we say start with what you know and what your family knows and the documents in your home, but not just in your home, also in your parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, any possible relation who might have documents that may help your search. When gathering information from your own home, some documents may need to stay where they are to be kept safe. I suggest scanning, photographing, or making a photocopy of them, and then returning the originals back to where they will be kept safe. For those documents that can be moved, and they may be in your desk, a closet, a dresser, in the attic, in the basement, in the garage, or a spare room, organize these documents in folders by family and keep them in a safe place like a plastic file box. That way, if disaster occurs, and often disaster involves water, these documents will be a little safer in that plastic file box. You'll likely want to scan these documents, too. From relatives like parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, visit them in person if possible to interview, get information, and ask permission to photograph and copy their photos and documents. If visiting in person isn't possible because of distance or other reasons, try contacting them by email or postal mail or even phone or video chatting with them to get information and possibly find out if they're technologically able or someone in their family is to digitally scan their documents and photos and share them with you. If possible, try to record the interview. If you're doing it from a distance, see if the software or um, you're using can record. And if it can't, locate a recording program that can be used at the same time you're using the chatting or video program. But do remember to ask the permission to record. That way, because many states, you need to do that. And that way you don't get in trouble legally. There are a wide variety of documents you may find at home. Vital records such as births, marriages, and death make excellent records for genealogy purposes. Certificates such as baptism, marriage, and graduation are great too. If you are lucky enough to be the current caretaker of a family Bible passed down generation to generation, that Bible may hold some clues for you. Obituaries and memorial cards are often found at home newspaper clippings too. 
photographs and the information they may contain on the back or sometimes the front uh, may help in identifying relatives and the photographer's studio and his his or her name may hold a clue also. Naturalization documents, older family documents from generations past, and earlier family attempts at a family history may yield some clues for you too. These are just a few of them and don't forget not only in your home but your parents, your grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. You are going to locate and collect the information your family has on itself. Analyze those documents and then organize the information you learn. You don't have to invent the wheel to keep track of things. You can choose to start this with paper forms developed by genealogists using pen and pencil or a genealogy program, which is essentially a computerized linked version of these forms. There are two core genealogy forms and ch or charts. The family group sheet shown, there are three shown on the left here, is a form for recording details about each family unit. You will create a family group sheet for each couple and their children. A person will appear as a child on their parents' family group sheet as either the husband or wife on their own family group sheet if he or she marries or has children, and as a parent on a child's family group sheet if he or she marries or has children. So you do one for each family unit. If someone is married more than once, each marriage would get its own family group sheet. That way it's clear which children, if any, are from which marriage. Now the other core form is the pedigree or ancestor chart. It shows and tracks an overview of your direct lineal ancestors. It's kind of a roadmap or tree of who you come from, the parents who made you, you. So it has your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, and your great great grandparents, and so on and so on. So you can organize with standard genealogy forms like paper forms. Before we move on, I have a few more points to make about genealogy forms and charts. The two core forms or charts have many variations out there. There are also specialty forms and charts for recording information that doesn't fit on a family group sheet or a pedigree ancestral chart. Many of these forms are free, some are pay. Now you're going to find these genealogy forms on a variety of websites such as genealogy group and society websites, and I've listed one example here. Or you can use Cindy's List, which is a website that is sort of an index or card catalog to genealogy and historical websites out there. So it's organized by subjects and under organizing, you can find links to websites containing a variety of genealogy forms and charts. Some are pay, some are free. So use what works best for you. Or rather than paper, you can try an online tree or genealogy software. Remember, these are computerized linked versions of these original paper forms. Let's look at online trees. On the pro side, they can be accessible anywhere. You can access them from a variety of devices. They're pretty easy to share with others, and they might be free. On the con side, you need internet to access them. They may require a membership fee, and they're not as private sometimes, depending on the settings you choose. 
There are two main types of online trees. The first is personal trees. These are trees that you alone control, add, delete, edit, often having privacy settings that can be set to public, anyone can see it, or private, only you and those you invite can see it. Now these settings you choose depend on how you feel about sharing and privacy. Online trees at websites like Ancestry.com, MyHeritage.com, and FindMyPast.com are examples of personal trees. The other type of online tree is a community or collaborative tree. And this is an online shared tree, meaning everyone works on the same tree that allows anyone to add, delete, edit any person. An example of an online tree that's a community or collaborative tree is the family search, family tree, and the wiki tree. What type you want to use depends on you and what you are doing with your tree. There are pros and cons either way between personal and community collaborative trees. Looking at genealogy software, the pros are that it's accessible anytime, anywhere you have your device. Genealogy programs usually have more features than online trees. Examples of this is more charting capability, more report capability, and generally a few more bells and whistles than is possible with an online tree. There's generally more privacy control because it's on your own computer. The internet is usually not required to do work in your genealogy program, and you may find a genealogy program that's free. The cons is that it's not as easy to share and work with others. Most require a computer, meaning a laptop or a desktop, and some software may have a cost, and some software may not be cross-platform capable, meaning it has a PC, a Mac, or a Linux version. The three most popular genealogy programs are listed on the right. Family Tree Maker is currently made by Software Mac Kiev. It is a pay software, but it does come in a PC and Mac version. It is the first and currently only one of two genealogy programs that can sync its tree file with an Ancestry online tree. It can also do some capabilities with family search. Roots Magic is another popular program. It has a free and a pay version. It's a PC program, but they are working on a Mac version. It is the other genealogy program that can sync its tree file with an Ancestry online tree. It does it in a little bit different way than Family Tree Maker does. It also has some capability to incorporate Family Search in its program. The third popular genealogy program is Legacy Family Tree. It has free and pay versions and is a PC program, but there are many other software publishers out there. I just wanted to list quickly the most popular ones. I want to take a moment to talk about privacy. Most websites that host online trees have constraints that determine based on the information inputted if a person is living or dead. And for living persons, usually only private or living is shown rather than the person's name and details. But it is still on you to protect any living person's privacy. Analyze what you record and enter. Whenever you enter information into your forms or your genealogy tree, online or program, analyze what you are recording. Does it make sense? the dates, the locations, or any other information. Are there possibly two people with the same name? So as you record what you know, you will better see what you don't know. Then you can decide what you want to learn. You can start simple with, for my ancestors who were alive in 1940, where were they recorded on the 1940 census? Or you can formulate a grander research plan. It's perfectly fine to start simple though. The second step is interview relatives and genealogists strongly recommend that you start with your elders. 
Often genealogists advise not to wait until you have all the documents. Ask your elders now. Talk to your elders so you do not lose their knowledge and stories. I realize you may not know what to ask at this point, but a simple internet search like interview questions genealogy will likely yield many ideas for your questions. Open-ended questions will yield more information than simple yes or no questions, but both question types are perfectly valid. But do be cautious and sensitive that not everyone will want to talk about every subject. For example, a war veteran may find it difficult to talk about his or her experience in a war. If possible, use a voice or video recorder. And again, remember, make sure you get their permission. Um, if you can't interview in person, try a video chat or phone or by email or postal mail. Anything is better than nothing. And if you record it, if you can record it, all the better because then you have it preserved for future reference. There are also books of interview questions that make great gifts and can be found on shopping sites like Amazon. But don't just believe what you are told. You need to prove it. And answers are sought in records. This is the end of Steps to Start Your Family Tree, Part 1, Gather, Record, Plan, and Interview. It's only been two of the steps, but they are huge steps. And by following these steps, you will see what you know about your family, so you can more clearly see what you do not know, and can seek out records and answers for your genealogical research. This has been Tips, Tricks, and How-To by Gone Researching. Goodbye. Oh, do remember to watch Steps to Start Your Family Tree, Part 2. Seek out records and answers. Goodbye now.